Hey everybody, just want to make a quick tutorial on how to make multiple zombie variants of running their blend spaces. So if you've ever run into the problem where you're working with a zombie in his animation blueprint and you look into the animation blueprint and you can only plug in like one blend space or maybe two if you use like a blend by bool. Uh, let's say you want like a, a horde of zombies and you want them to have like different varied um, sprint animations instead of just using one blend space for all of the zombies which will make them all look similar maybe you have like tons of different animations and you want to use different blend spaces but there's no way to actually plug in in a blend space multiple animations you just have an idle and a run and usually like a walk in between so there's no way to really switch out the animations. Well, I'm going to make, I'm going to show you how you can easily do it. So what you would do is you would just make multiple blend spaces. So like this one's called zombie idle run. This is the one I have by default in my zombie template. But, uh, for example, I have another one right here where he goes from idle hopping to jump hopping. And then I have a crawl blend space where he's does the same thing. I mean, these are just basic um, blend spaces but you would probably have a bunch that look like this with a bunch of uh, sprinting blend spaces so once you have all of your blend spaces set up which they're all the same you just make sure their speed and uh, axis values over here are set up right uh, once you have all those you would just go into your zombie animation blueprint which is HGT zombie animations and then zombie and BP you open this up and let's see so the first thing this is how it looks by default in the animation graph uh, what you want to do is you want to go to the event graph which looks like this and what I'm gonna do is make a new variable come down here in the bottom left click on variable call it random num or random number whatever you want to call it and make sure it's set to variable type of integer over here and then the default value doesn't matter um, then all you got to do is we're going to do a blueprint interface. Um, if you already have one that you want to use, you can, but I'm just going to make a new one for the sake of the video. So you would right click, you go to blueprint and then interface and you click that. Give it a name. I called it zombie anim interface and it opens up like this. And then the uh, function that I made, I just called it update blend space. So you type in the name here. And then when you click it, come down here under inputs and click the new parameter button and make the input a random num or random number, whatever you want to call it, and make sure it's set to type of integer. And then just compile and save that. Then we go back into the uh, zombie animation blueprint. And you want to go to class settings right here. And then over here on the right hand side where it says interfaces, you want to click the add button. And this is where you want to type in uh, the zombie anim interface. And then you add that. And it appears right here in the list. And then you want to make sure you compile and save first. Otherwise, this next step won't work. So once you've been compiled and saved that, then you can just come into any blank space in here, right click, and you can just type in the name of this event. So in our case, it's called update blend space. So you just type in update blend space and you don't want to call a function you want to add the event so you click on the event update blend space it creates a uh, little event here you know you did it right if it has this little blue pit blueprint picture with arrows and a gear in the corner and then you just want to take your random number over here the new variable that we created hit set and then just connect it up and then once that's connected up then we can uh, go over into the animation graph and inside the animation graph we'll go to the default and let's see the idle and run is where you want to change so you would come into idle run and by default I believe it looks like this let's see I'll show you we'll start from scratch so by default this is what I think it looks like so what we want to do is off of this false true means you're missing one leg so he's just gonna do the zombie one leg blend space which is jumping on one leg 
um, you can uh, edit this if you want this is where you have changed that as well but for our video here um, we're going to instead of just using this one uh, zombie idle run blend space we are gonna disconnect it and then we're gonna use a right click and do blend poses by int and it gives you this nice node and we're going to connect this into the faults and then uh, we plug in our random number here into our index active child index and then uh, this as you can see it gives you a default for 0 and 1 this depends on how many um, blend spaces you have so in my case I have the three that come with the zombie template so that's what I'm using for the sake of the video is these three so I have uh, the zombie run the zombie crawl and the zombie one leg blend space and to get those blend spaces you come over here and you just drag like zombie crawl blend space drag it in zombie one leg drag it in zombie idle run drag it in so once you've dragged those three into your scene, then you can plug them up. So so let's say we want the crawling one for a random num If the random number is zero, we'll make them crawl. If the random number is one, we'll make them one leg. And then to get this third pin, you just right click on this node and come down here and click on add blend pin at the very bottom. And it adds another pin, plug that in. Now if you have more blend spaces, you would just keep doing this. You would right click, add another blend pin. And that will be for the number three. Now if you accidentally did this and you need to go back, you right click on this pin, remove blend pin. And there you go. And then also make sure you plug in speed into all these, otherwise it won't play the blend space. And that sets up the uh the randomly it'll randomly select one of these based on the random number. So if it's zero, this one, one, this one, two, this one, that gives you the blunt spaces. Now we have to actually set this up to uh, pick the random number. So if you go into HGT AI Zombie and click on Base Zombie, uh, what we can do is the easiest way is to just add the event possessed. So if you just right click in a blank spot, type in possessed. Uh, click on event possessed it creates this event and you can read it right here it says normally only occurs on the server so this is a server only event which is great because that's what we want so what we're going to do is um, technically we don't even need this or this all you have to do is plug in this uh, cast to gameplay game mode so you would right click you'd say get game mode it gives you this node you drag off of it, you say cast to gameplay GM. Gives you this node. Alright. So then uh, you would want to get a replicated integer. So we're doing all this for multiplayer. If it wasn't for multiplayer, this would be a little easier, but it's no big deal. So for multiplayer, you want to make sure that this integer is only get, got once and by the server and then told to all the other players. So what we do is I already have a, a function built into the game mode called get replicated int and you just call this and then as you can see you get to input your minimum and your maximum. So if you come over back to here like as you can see in my example here I have three of them and I start at zero so I have zero, one, and two. So for this base zombie you would start minimum of zero and a max of two, which gives you zero, one, and two, which is a total of three options. So then what you want to do is you want to make a new variable down here, bottom left, click that, and name the variable random num, just like the other one. Make sure it's set to type integer, and also under replication condition here, not condition, the replication, make sure it's set to uh, rep notify. All right. And that's when you just drag this into the graph and set it to whatever this random number that gets selected right there. And then off of that, uh, we want to, uh, let's see, it'll work either way. But what you want to do is you want to take the zombie mesh over here, the mesh component, drag it into the graph, 
drag off and say get anim instance and it's this one right down here get anim instance and this is where we're going to call the um, event that we made inside of our animation blueprint which was called update blend space and you can see it says message here in parentheses so once you call that then you connect this up like that and connect this random num to that random num and then you want to copy these three nodes here so highlight them copy them and then this set with notify double click it and inside we're going to paste those nodes like this and then you just want to take the random number here drag it in and connect it in like that so uh, if you want me to explain what that does, basically what this is is a on rep function. This gets called anytime something is like out of sync. So let's say, let's say I started the game, right? I put, I'm killing zombies for five minutes. A uh, player joins in late. He joins into the game, mid game. Uh, he would receive this uh, rep notify event, which would run this and say, okay, let me receive that um, random number and it gets the exact same number as the host who's been in the game for five minutes and it would update the blend space so let's say the random number was uh, zero it picked the number zero which makes the zombie crawl so that way the host has been fighting this crawling zombie for five minutes client joins in he receives that same exact number of zero which shows that the zombies crawling on his screen as well if we didn't go through this um, on rep way of doing it uh, and we only just let's say we just did something simple like random int and range if we did something like this instead and just did 0 to 2 technically it would work but these numbers would be different for each player so the host player might get a it might pick zero for the host and it might pick one for a client number one and it might pick two for the second or third player in the game so then everybody's screen one person might be seeing a crawling zombie other person might be seeing a running zombie other person might be seeing a hopping zombie and it would all be out of sync so that is the reason we went through this step of doing it all inside of uh, the base zombie we're doing it on the server we're getting the number from the game mode which is a server only so all this is done through server and then we just replicate it through a on rep variable so now that all that is set up you just um that's pretty much it so you just have to make sure these numbers uh match up with the amount of uh blend spaces and stuff that you're using here you know if you set a random number between zero and if you set this to 0 and 20 and you only have 3 over here that's going to be a lot of numbers that aren't going to have any pin attached to it so just make sure you you set the numbers right and then if you hop into the game let's see what we got here I'll set it to two players and you can see it picked a crawler for that one and a run walker for that one and then the zombie should spawn here in a second and you'll see that they're in sync so you got some that are hopping you got some that are crawling you got some that are walking and it's all in sync with the other players so side by side you can see they're all doing the same thing which is what we want so it's a simple little easy way to do it I'm sure there's an Unreal Engine if you didn't know there's always like 20 ways to do the same thing so if you got a better way then go for it man don't don't take this way as the gospel it's not the only way you have to do it it's just a way that I thought was uh, handy and easy to do it's just using a random number we don't even have to change much so I hope that helps uh, also just tidbit there's also a uh, initialize event blueprint initialize animation this one right here this runs once as soon as the uh, this animation blueprint um, I guess is created 
in your game. It runs once. Like this one down here ticks all the time. You can see it running. This one runs once. So if you ever wanted to just like switch up my logic a little bit, maybe plug this into that and then tweak where it doesn't have to check this or whatever. I mean, technically this is doing the same thing. You just might be able to save like a check or two. So this has nothing to do with the tutorial video. I'm just letting you know, if you ever need something to just run once in your animation blueprint, as soon as it starts, that's what this is for. Comes in handy. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. That should uh, help a lot of people get a bunch of um, different animated zombies, but they're without having to come in here and duplicate a bunch of, create a bunch of child zombies and stuff. Cause I guess technically that's one way you could do it. You could come in here and create like 12 child zombies and have 12 different actors in this list and then change the animation blueprint and have 12 different <laughs> animation blueprints. But I don't think that's very, uh, optimal optimized. Cause then you'd have 12 different things, 12 different. I mean, that takes up disk space. It's running a lot of, just a lot of work for no reason where you can literally just come in here and use one node and put a little code right here in the zombie and you're good. So I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you around.